thank you to Sister Kampong for the opportunity to share on mentoring. Um, mentoring, um, I'm very fortunate because I can I'm mentor three three races, Malay, Chinese, and Indian. Uh, so uh, because uh, of English group, we have three races in in English group. So I'm fortunate to able to nurture a uh, three races. Um, I see nurturing of Menti is uh, is a journey, and I like like I'm growing up with them. And it gives me the inspiration uh, to be beginning again. Uh, like, uh, it's a new page. Uh. Every new mentee to me is a new page. And uh, I, I hope I can do it better uh, each time. Um, I think right I always treat vote. my mentee as a friend. Uh, as my friend. Uh, not that uh, su superior, you know, I'm, I'm above you, you must listen to me. Uh, it's not that way. It's, uh, I treat them as friend. Um. Maybe it was also my own, one of my strengths I always feel is that I listen. I would like to listen to their conversation, even though they're not talking to me, but it's a conversation between uh, Dharma friends. Uh, and especially in their sharing, i able to able to uh, know uh, their way of life, uh, their family commitment, their like, dislike, have teacher tendency. So from there is that I pay attention a few more rounds and I already know agaga where, where they stand and when, because when, they are, when you are at the starting stage, actually most of them will come in with, you cannot say they come in, oh, I have, I want to be a committed volunteer, uh, no such thing. Uh, like everyone is here that because I have some free time and I want to do some good uh, kind deeds, I'm here in Suji. So it takes time to nurture. It takes time. So, um, um, uh, although I'm not a very patient person, but uh, with my mentee, I do. Lah, is that uh, partly because what the journey I've gone through myself. Um, because I don't have very good mentor. So I am, and you know, uh, because English educated is more vocal like than anyone. Uh, I, and the Chinese educated would understand I, I feel they don't understand me. Uh, they don't understand those English educated background. So they like to impose their standard into them. I say this one, it, it can't work. Uh, because you must treat each of them as individual. Uh, they're unique by itself. They have their strength. Of course, they have their weaknesses. I would prefer always to look at their strength over their weaknesses. Who doesn't have weaknesses? Uh, you, you're not God, uh, you know? And nobody is perfect. So I always... Um, I said I have very good observation power. So I'm very good at observation and taking on uh, speech uh, by my mentee, how they share and things that... So I will capture it and I remember by heart. Uh, this one, I keep it in my heart uh, that uh, what, what, what are the strengths and how best I can, I can capitalize on their strength. Because it's very important because then they feel that... Hey, I feel that way. Like, I'm not too sure my mentee feel that way or not. But I say that if I can um, pay, uh, accommodate to their uh, needs and uh, how they can food, uh, they can contribute, I feel that um, this way the working relationship will be so much better. Uh, like I say, I, all the mentee that I go through is not all highly educated. And there are also no education at all. So... Um, and especially, I, not that I look down on others, but an educated compared to the lowest that is non-educated, there's a lot of adjustment, but I, I'm, like I say, I'm, I can be very patient. Uh, and I always try to accommodate to their way of life and how best we adjust to their time for them to, uh, to contribute. So we must always plan, plan things for them to do, but that can uh, adjust to their time. So, uh, like I say, I'm very patient in waiting for affinity. Uh, uh, like, uh, the case like uh, my four okay. angels, uh, uh, Sister Sangwon, Sister Waiping, Sister Annie Lee, Annie Heng. You can't push them out. But when, I know their potential, but when they're not ready, I can't push them. Until they're ready. 
So when they're ready, is it four of them just, yes, they go for soon. Uh. So that one, I think almost, uh, since, uh, how many years? Uh, four years? Uh. <laughs> is it four years? Uh, I think, yes, I think four, four years. years, uh. four, years. four years, mm. uh, four years, yeah. And so I can see their potential. But I just cannot, because each of them got their family commitment and um, has to take their own pace. So I don't go after targets. Uh, oh, this year I must have how many menti must sold uh, uh, or go commissioning. I, I don't have such target because when a, when a menti is not ready to go uh, commissioning, uh, you push them to go just because you need to keep your target. Uh, it will fail. Uh, they won't come out. And, uh, uh, because they are not, they are not, uh, they, are, they are not in that. They understanding and uh, the need of commitment. Because commitment in Suzy is not so simple and say, oh yeah, I got free time, come out. No, is that you make time for it. You have to make time. So no matter how busy or schedule, you have to make time. That is our com- commitment. Like just now, it's a Buddha spirit is master's mission, you know. So it's a, there is a responsibility on our shoulder. If a person is not ready to shoulder that just because we, oh, you completed your classes, you better go or go or no. Chances the withdrawal can be quite fast uh, because you because they they are not ready, you push them. So that's why I always wait for in uh, I wait for affinity. If all of them are ready, okay, let's go. Uh, if not, then we wait for another year. But of course, uh, we we'll tell them nicely uh, that uh, always consult them. You know, are they ready? Um, you want to? They said no. Okay, never mind. It's okay. If you don't mind attending another year of class, uh, of course, some of course I do at times convince them that uh, do it as fast as possible. But of course, if the mentee does, um, if the shin is it's even better. So they understand the importance of time, uh, importance of the seizing every opportunity. Huh? So like we said, while waiting for the affinity to arrive, uh, to, to be there, the, then we create, uh, we create opportunity for them to contribute. Hope they find Dharma joy. Like, as the more Dharma joy you receive, the more you want to come out because you, you uh, that, that feeling nobody can take it away from you. Uh, but if you don't, if you sit there and don't do anything for them, you just, ah, uh, okay, every time, uh, please remember, come to class, come to class. Uh. Uh, if that's all your duty, I feel that there's no meaning in being a mentor because mentor has to be observing if they have Difficulty that to listen to them, how best they also wanted to continue because of family commitment. I will understand then how to how to adjust uh, and find you can squeeze in opportunity, we squeeze in maybe even for one hour. I'm pretty happy. Uh, you don't have to be two, three hours or four hours because we know uh sometimes Saturday, Sunday is a family days as well. So try to be as commodative as possible and at the same time give them a helping hand to let them able to contribute. Uh, so so to see so, or, or throw something to them uh, that whether they wanted to shoulder it or not, no? uh, in a very small way. So got to keep thinking of ways uh, to, so that the yin yang can, uh, the affinity can surface very fast. Because sometimes it can be uh, sunk, uh, hidden deep down, cannot uh, surface. So try to... Um, Give them a helping hand, uh, uh, I said, uh, for them to overcome the obstacles, you know, so uh, how best uh, uh, to cater to their, uh, actually to accommodate. Uh, I also say is that um, uh, I'm, I feel that uh, my strength is that I give room for outspoken mentee because we have to give them room to express. Not everyone the same, cannot be so like docile. Uh, I got to keep quiet. Uh, they want to go away. Uh. So they need to express their opinion and we are not here to stop them from expressing themselves. Maybe like say, as we express, then we know the way of thinking. Then after that, uh, how we can adjust accordingly after uh, um, showing them the right path. Uh, maybe this is not the way, you know, maybe, you know, it's a, like a friendly discussion, uh, friendly uh, conversation. Uh, um, I will, I'll give them examples, you know, so what is the way there? Of course, I can quote master what they want, how they do it, or maybe a certain, um, soup in the, um, you know, or, or, or in the wisdom at dawn. So I will, ex- I will, whatever I capture, then I will, um, share with them.
Of course, uh, be a mentee, uh, you cannot just instruct. Uh. Keep on instructing and then you don't do, huh? nobody will respect us. Uh. So I am also, I, I always there to contribute. I ever ready. If they don't take it, I take it. But sometimes they also follow my school start and say, okay, la, do together. La, you know? So if the mentee keep instructing, hey, please do this, do that. La, say, Ay, uh, nobody will bother, la, you know. <laughs> Who are you? Anything? <laughs> you know? Uh, so I, I, I don't like this. Uh, I feel that I, I should also play a part. Unless truly I don't have uh, not, uh, the schedule is not a right, then I, I, I can't squeeze in that I will I will apologize uh, to them that why I cannot join also. Uh, I think we it's a mutual respect between uh, uh, men, mentor and mentee. Okay, yeah, then uh, I have to conclude uh, the next next page. Uh. Yeah, conclusion actually is uh, I enjoy this journey of mentoring. I say just now, uh, growing up with them, uh, see them blossom into beautiful lotus. I think mutual respect and grateful heart is very important. Uh, mutually respect each other, not, not that I'm, I'm your superior, uh, you know, because I'm a mentor, uh, you must listen what I have to say. Uh. No, uh, it's not. Because uh, you are edu some are educated in your own way. You have your own experience that we can share. And I'm learning from, actually, I'm learning from each and every one of them. You know, I, actually, I, I find a lot of joy when I see them grow. Ah, like a baby, huh? <laughs> grow up, like, so I'm so happy for them that uh, they found the path. And uh, so that's why it always keep me young, in a sense, because, or keep me, I, I like, I'm on first day. I, until now, although it's already 14 years, I, I, I feel that every day in Tsuji is my first day in Tsuji. Uh, I, I always find the joy to see uh, the men, my mentee grows and then they take on additional responsibility and how, you know, step by step, they, they, they find the Dharma joy in Wing So, uh, and I say like uh, nurturing three different races, uh, it has a challenge, but I, I find joy. And actually, when I saw uh, as well as I see this, uh, my Indian uh, volley, uh, commissioners, uh, when they shoulder responsibility, you know, he's just a housewife, uh, but they, their commitment uh, it actually gives you a lot of joy. From a housewife that know nothing, wow, when you now know they can shoulder, how they can take care of their own uh, dharma, uh, uh, Dharma friends and uh, as well as um, maybe uh, the uh, their own community. I think I can never imagine in their life also they can never imagine that as a housewife they can they can do so much yeah, for the community. So this is a part of growing with them and actually like be a mentor like a lifetime mentor that uh, you know you, you you like to see them grow and uh, grow up already. Also like to see how they. Um, Better, like I said, much faster in today. Uh, we said, don't that we should be very happy to see that they are better than us. They can do even more. Uh, we should have this uh, joy in us. Uh. Not enough. Uh, sister Alicia, yeah. Okay, I can vouch uh, for sister. Uh, Suisan, I can rely on her. Whenever I say, Sister Suisan, can you help out? Uh, can do sharing? Uh, yes, when? I can vouch for that. And I know I can always count on your Sister Suisan. Can earn, can earn, Sister Suisan. And as Sister oh, Suisan said, uh, adapt and adjust accordingly using skillful means. Yeah. Yes, that is important. And you know your mentees and your strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. Okay. Can earn. Okay. So mentor, uh, Sister Suisan say it's full of sincerity and caring. And we are also the guiding light. Okay. And so we organize with precepts and manage with love. As Master says, organize with precepts and manage with love. Uh, Sister Alicia, can we share? Can you help me to share on the second video? Okay. Um, 
Right, can you all see my screen? Can you all see my screen? Yes. No. Uh, yes, la, but no. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. 跟他们说我不哄话上面最多啊我不知道什么叫制度假如勉强说有的话借以借为制度也没有什么管理啊我也不懂得管理啊假如要说有管理的话以爱为管理每一个人呢要自我管理啊不要说谁管谁你要问你
say confess uh, this fear of the unknown and also because we carry with us a lot of perception so in the first year i do a lot of observation very detached because newbie ma. so and then fear a lot of things don't know right so you dare not uh, be so uh, in front you like to remain at the back so i do a lot of observations and along the way on the one whole year of doing observation uh, I, I noticed that uh, sister Kang Fong is truly truly a very caring that's what i learned from her a very caring to you uh, these top three attributes that i observe is caring punctual and nurturing her nurturing include include i think more than the to you where actually at times uh, she will care for the mentee will give them uh, she will offer coaches to call why they didn't turn up uh, what is their challenges and so forth and she will give additional pointers uh, what are the things they need to look out for to progress to the next level or from Gen C to a, a patient but one thing I learned from her is that um, when you have give your best as a Tuifu uh, there's also a constant condition that is each of the individual of the Gen C or even a patient, a patient must go through when you have given your best uh, don't have to uh, how you say it uh, feel bad about oneself if the Gen Z or patient didn't progress because uh, this is the affinity that they must go through uh, so that you will practice with ease so and then in the year of Gen Z where sister come home say okay you want you can now become a full-fledged so of course in 2021 that's what I did and I have sister uh, Julie with me and sister come home uh, she always nurture you and uh, she say okay this year also you must go and mentor uh, I say guide sister Julie to be a Tuifu uh, so in this year 2021 uh, 2021 uh, attitude wise I'm still a very responsible type uh, but I still don't understand the true value uh, uh, of uh, the role of a Tuifu, it doesn't penetrate me yet. So the awakening of the true spirit came through the recent month uh, from listening to the master teaching. And also, I guess, towards the last quarter of 2021, so happened that time, uh, there was the chapter on the parable of the lost son. So when I was in conversation with Sister Kam Fong, uh, she was the one actually triggered this and give me the awakening. Uh. She said, uh, do you realize or not, it's very similar to our role, whether we are doing EGBR or Tuifu. Uh, this lost soul, not say lost soul, uh, our family member, they come knocking on the door on the Suchi. So they already walk into our door. Of course, for the Tata, they just knock. For the Chen and patient, they are already inside our door, inside coming in already. So we like, Sister Kampong said we live up to Master's uh, mission on the Buddha spirit, right? If we treat all of them as a family. So this is, uh, like Sister Kampong said, people have taught us before, have guided it before. Now it's our time to give back. And when we, we need to give the same care, that's right. Um, because Sister Kampong was a very caring person. There's one thing that I said to her that if ever I become a three, four, or even a mentor, I will give back whatever that she has given to me, you know live to the best that a role model has given me so uh, now and also after i listen to master i understand uh, more better because it has been two years listening to master the wall of a commissioner the first wall uh, in english said i want to deliver counter sentient beings right it kind of, now it dawns on me uh, i'm able to see now uh, being a tuifu is one of the door that can i do to deliver more people as a living body so why i say this uh, if you look at our current world uh, we are actually at the dharma degeneration right if we have very many people having the same uh, mind like bodhisattva bodhisattva means people who are very compassionate right they do things for people very gentle very calm if we have many 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 more people who understand this principle this, and we are surrounded by living bodies. So imagine the kind of situation and harmonious uh, thing that we will, uh, that we will uh, experience. Uh, apart from this, uh, looking at the current world that we're in now, and must, what Master say is true, we need more living bodies out because why? They are more suffering sentient beings. And we need many more living bodies out uh, to go and help them, you know, uh, relieve them from suffering. That's why now I am seeing my three full role as uh, not uh, as a responsible anymore. I, I see it's one of the door for me to live to the wow that, uh, you know, when we, are com when we are certified as commissioner, uh, we need to take this to our future life also. So, so much so, uh, uh, before the session of the diligent day start, right, I was thinking, hey, how come Sister Kampong haven't given any notice yet? Uh? Uh, I was still chatting my home brother, right? So, my home brother said, why, why you so kanjang? I said, no, la, this year I truly want to be tuifu, you know? So, I go and test Kampong. Hey, Sister Kampong, am I still qualified to be a tuifu this year? Sister Kampong, yeah, don't worry, don't worry, coming already, come, you see? 
my attitude changed from being observer, from just being pure, responsible, you know, just do the duty. Uh, now I understand the essence of being a Twifu because it is more than that. So having gone through uh, the first year and the second year, now what do I do when I'm a lead pa uh, patient? Uh? So uh, this one I will just share with you. This is my own takeaway. May apply to you, may not, but kalau boleh pakai, ambil saja ya. Okay, so uh, this year in my year as a uh, patient, uh, three fully, I carry in me uh, the essence of uh, master teaching. So, uh, of course, from the past two years, what I learned from Sister Kampong, I, I similar to what Sister uh, uh, Suisan has said, I try to observe and understand each individual strength. Because in a team of a few members, you will have some that are very more outspoken, introvert and extrovert and so forth, uh, or their readiness for certain things. So, and we know that each time after a diligent session, there's always a breakout room, right? So I will try to identify who are more the courageous one, who are the extrovert, who are more willing to share. So in the first few uh, of the uh, breakout session, I will always call on this extrovert or the courageous one to speak first so that they will do the leading, uh, the starting so that uh, people can observe and they also can learn for them. So that's what uh, I do. I try to observe each individual strength. Then I will tap on the more capable one to lead the group in any breakout discussion. Uh, also, during the as a, as a Tuifu, during the breakout room, uh, we must try our best to encourage that all team members uh, does their sharing. And if they divert or go off tangent, we need to bring them back. And also, as a Tuifu, we try to speak less. Uh, however, if everybody has finished speaking, and sometimes, you know, they can finish 15 minutes before half an hour, you stick for 15 minutes to go, right? Uh, that's where uh, you try to come in and, you know, share what is relevant for the day's topic with them. Uh. So, but the first priority is to, is to let every member speak, and if they digress, you bring back to the topic for the day. Uh, also, one of the things that we need to look out for is to discern the time knowledge that you wish to share in your chat group. So, like when my first year with the TNC, I don't share much Dharma because I know they are very new. So, we need to know their background in the sense of uh, how ready are they to accept uh, master teaching and so forth because we also don't want to scare them off. So, then we will talk more of uh, a layman language. Uh, for some patient, they are more into, like to talk about vegetarian and cooking, you know, there was one year some patient group, they are like that. But this year, I can't quite bless uh, the team that I'm in. They are quite ready to uh, listen to master teaching, you know. So it kind of jive with my own strength, like, because it comes to cooking, I'm not good. So I'm blessed in the way they send most of my uh, patient members, uh, they are quite ready to discuss about master's teaching. So like what uh, master always said, we must share according to one's capability and to give the correct dosage. Uh, so this is the balancing act that we must do. Uh, not too much of anything, just like a guitar, if too little a string, no music come up. To tight the string, it will just break when you play. So we go for the middle part. That's what I mean. We must give the correct dosage. So uh, because of this uh, experience that I have uh, gained through the last two years, so and uh, because I'm, I really, uh, how you say, it? because of master's teaching, I really want to, because master said, use our mouth to do sharing, to spread the Dharma wheel instead of talking gossip, right? And so happened this year, uh, I have... Uh, patient that's willing to listen. So my handling of the group is very different from the Chen Si. So what I do is, after training of Diligence Day, I actually reinforce with quiz and scribble game. So uh, I will share these actual use cases uh, with sister here today. So like for example, uh, after they have done their feedback, so I will wait up around the like, evening. I will just say, okay, sister, come, let's just play a game to test our memory. So I say, okay, uh, I will start off first. Lah. I say, this one phrase stay with me for today. For example, I started with saying, uh, Buddha, one great cause coming to this world is to teach us to walk the body so apart. I say, what about you, sister? Any phrase or work that stay with you? So again, very lucky, there was one sister that said, oh, okay. Uh, Master said, all sufferings come from human due to endless greed. They stay alive is very simple. To stay alive is very simple. Just two bowl of rice, some veggie and fruits. So what I do is I pick on the word that they have said because I see the word keyword greed. Then I will connect with master teaching. I will say, oh, very true. Greed is one of the five mental poison of the mind that causes man-made disaster. Then there will be another. So because of this, it, there's a ripple effect. Another sister also jump in and said, oh, uh, she said, master, I like master phrase, energy of goodness. So the keyword was goodness. 
Then I also tap on this and connect with master teaching again because I said uh, Buddha have taught us, uh, have taught everybody according to sentient being capabilities. However, there's one fundamental principle, no matter what kind of capability you have, that is all of us must cultivate the root of goodness. Goodness, that's how I kind of uh, do the chit-chatting uh, with the group after the uh, diligence day. Then, uh, quite surprised, few hours later, another sister come in, uh, that's called Sister GT. Uh, she give very good sharing, you know. She was saying like, uh, uh, like, even though we listen to Master in the morning, sometimes about not buying egg and so forth, but evening when she go for shopping, she constantly pick up eggs that's so used to buying, right? So when I hear this word that we easily forgot what Master teaching, because there are many comments before to say that Master Dharma teaching are very repetitive. So I pick on this and then I share, yes, it's very true. Uh, Buddha has said before, human beings are very stubborn and hard to train. So I will share with them which episode Master said that. And I said, um, I come to realize now because I've listened to uh, Dharma teaching for two years. Uh, actually, Master, when she repeat every time, uh, she's having compassion for us. Because you know why? We're human forgetting easily. But because Master, she re repeated very, uh, what do you call it, the important principle every time, right? Somehow it's sit into you, you know, and without you knowing, uh, it's already inside you. So I, I really appreciate it because I realized Master is very compassionate to all of us, to all her disciples who forget things so easily. Listen in the morning, evening, forget already. So that's why she repeats certain principle every day. And and because of this also, when, because we say about us being very forgetful, right? So I, I share the sister. I, Hi, sister. I said, I got a method, you know, how I remember things after uh, master's uh, teaching. I said, most when we go through this progress of cultivation, I have this keyword. So I share with them. First, we listen. Then we understand. Then we contemplate. We practice and realize. So I said, we need to uh, apply this principle, else it will remain as emptiness. So I let that, I, I leave this for a while with them, for after two hours later, then I come back, I say, Hi sister, actually uh, this keyword was sambungan one, no? do you want to uh, guess the next word or not? So if anybody who can guess the next word, I say I will blanja you vegetarian food at Jujube. So there's one sister that so sporting, she said, okay, I want to try. So I use the method of scribble. I say, okay, the next word is uh, six character, start with S and with D, can you all guess? So this sister very good, no? She come back, she can say, okay, uh, it's spread. So, okay, I say, all right. So after realization, you spread the Dharma. So after spreading, what happened? The next keyword. So she also come back. Then I say, this is a nine character word and she able to guess again, because this so happened, this sister, she likes to play scramble. Then she said, okay, it's transformed. So the last one was a bit tough for her. I said, okay, after transform, then what happened? After you transform yourself, you transform others. Well, what do you do next? So I give them, I said, it's a three character word. And this sister take quite a while, ding dong a bit, but I always give them tips so that they can answer easily. Don't make it too hard for them. And she able to come and say, it's wow. So after first you listen, then you understand, then you contemplate. After you contemplate, you practice. That means you go among the masses, you do CBI, you do charity, you do the post flat cleaning. When you do all this, you realize certain learning, right? Then you will share with people. That's why you spread. And, and as, as when you do spreading of uh, master teaching or Buddha's teaching, you transform yourself and you transform others. And then certain part down the road, you begin to realize. Then you have inspiration or you aspire. That's where you start to make wows. Just like my mentor, she have a very great wow. She want to recruit more living bodhisattvas. So this is the wow. Now I'm able to share with her. So after this first round of scribble, so what I do next is, actually, I check the temperature. Temperature of all the sisters now because I don't want to give over overdose. Ma. So I asked the sister, I said, okay, after this first round, are you okay with playing this way? Do you want to continue or stop? So I was quite glad that all of them said, yeah, okay, let's have another round of scribble. So then I said, okay, how do I then uh, play with them yet align with master teaching, right? So I remember it must, every time when we have diligence day, we have the mission statement reading, uh, there was two keywords there, which is called internal cultivation and external practice. So I use this to play scribble. I say, okay, I say, okay, in life, we observe many things, everything come into pair, right? Two pair of eyes, one pair of eyes, one pair of and so forth. And I say, okay, for this scribble, we start with the word, we start with internal cultivation. So I said, there is four keywords. This four keywords is inside the mission statement. So for those who pay attention, they will be able to guess. 
for the whole, for those who didn't, it's a learning for them. So you see, it's a win-win for everybody. Win for those who remember, win for those who will come across what it means to have four key values for internal cultivation. So actually, the four internal cultivation, the value that we must have as a volunteer or as a commissioner or as working the body sour part is sincerity, integrity, faith, and steadfastness. So this is the one I played the scribble with them. Lah. So so we finished the uh, second round of scribble. And then, of course, in other days, we continue on, on other things that uh, related to master teaching and, and also to suchi platform. Lah. So the key thing is, when we understand the character of our patient, uh, whenever any sharing that we do with them is something that they can absorb, as well as that we are in line with master teaching, that we are not drifted too far away. So today, I'd like to leave these three questions with you for your contemplation. Should you want to share with me, please do PM me. Uh, this question is something that uh, as I listen to Master, I begin to understand better. So here it goes. Have you ever wondered why you are born in this era, this time period? Is there a purpose to it? Why you are born uh, this time, this era? And how is that you are able to encounter Suchi? Can earn, this is my sharing today. Amit Hofo.